Night Tiger Comics supports our local comic shops. This channel is sponsored by Captain Kirk's Geek Shop of Ocala, Florida. Tell them Night Tiger Comics YouTube sent you, and on your next purchase of $40 or more, receive $5 off at checkout. This channel is also sponsored by Vibranium Comics of Ocala. Once again, tell them Night Tiger Comics sent you, and receive $5 off your next purchase of $50 or more. So hit that Google search and visit your local comic shops. Oh, and let's not forget, August 22nd, Comic Fest is here again. That's right, and once again, hosted by Austin Brueger, owner of Vibranium Comics of Ocala. Place, Ocala Paddock Mall, time, 11 a.m. to 3 p.m., but get there at 10 to scoop on those deals. And mention Night Tiger Comics sent you and get 10% off any purchase at the Vibranium Comics and Captain Kirk's Geek Shop booth. And make sure to wear your mask. Okay, comic book junkies, we're gonna try this. We're gonna do we're gonna do an epic comic book haul. This is not gonna be a short one, it's gonna be a long one, so I better quit talking. But you saw I, I'm got two sponsors for the channel now. Not going to beat that with a dead horse, but if you're ever in town, just tell them I sent you, get some money off. And we got the big Comic Fest coming up. This thing is better than the Ocala Comic Con. I'm, it's, it's all, all comic books. It's at the Paddock Mall, August 22nd. If you're in Florida, this is the one you need to go to. There's a couple sellers that come that everybody's there early to get their dollar books because they have epic dollar book uh, long boxes. So that's the 22nd. Be there at 10. Be there early. I The first time I went, I was late. I think two times. And I missed out on a lot of deals. But anyways, got this in the mail. I think this is the big key. I paid $64 for this. It's an issue that I've been looking for, but it's a white cover. So it's always yellowed. And I wanted a high-grade copy on eBay, which I thought was a really good steal for the, price, for the condition of this book. Now, they said it was an 8.0, but I think they may, I'm hoping they undergraded it. It looked like it to me. And, man, they really, they really uh, package this thing. I mean, it is. I'm going to pause the video so you don't have to sit there and listen to me talk while I open it. Okay, so I unpackaged it, cut the tape. I thought I, I thought I did a good job. So let's see what this is. I'm just as excited as you are. This is, oh man, I'm happy to get this book. And I've been cutting lawns to earn a little bit of extra money to buy comics because I'm out of work and my disability only covers um, the bills. So I didn't have anything to buy comics with. So kind of been pushing myself. I'm not supposed to, but... What are you going to do when you want to buy comics? you got to do something. I'm sorry it's taking so long. All right. It's open. Okay. Well, we thought it was open. He said he was going to really package it really well. Now, it, it the cover is a bit yellowish. It looked brighter in, in the actual pictures. But still, it's this book is really tough to get in a really really nice grade so Nick Fury agent of shield number four I mean it doesn't look bad definitely is like an 8-0 so but you know this is a really really tough one to find in such high high grade because of the white cover I mean the corners are nice and crisp there's no marble chipping. There's no blunted corners on it. So 64 shipped. I think it was a, a really good deal. He's got the micro chamber paper inside of it. Look at the pages, though. The pages are awesome. I don't know if you can tell with that light how, how bright they are. So really happy to get this. Oh my goodness, it actually looks like it may have just come off the newsstand. So we're going to set this over here where it's nice and safe. I don't want that to get damaged. It's, it's, it's a pretty nice copy. So anyways, let's get on with the haul. So 
first we're going to start out at five and below. Now, I went there once. They saw this book. I paged through it, and I couldn't get it out of my mind. And this was like a month or two ago. And I had to dig through the five, the table of books. And I was like, man, they don't have it anymore. So I was digging, and I found it. This is the Black Panther Ultimate Guide for five bucks. Look how thick it is. I mean, originally it came in a hardcover, but this one's only five bucks, man. It's got some fantastic stuff in here. It's just really high quality printing. The whole history of Black Panther. So if you got a five and below near you, this is one I recommend go out and get this. Get a couple copies if you can. I couldn't I didn't find any more. Last time I went, they had a stack of them like this, so they went pretty good. So that's Black Panther, the ultimate guide. This is from 2019. I did post some pictures of it on my Instagram, Night Tiger Comics, all one word. Okay, so I got picked up the free comic books. This is the only cool one I thought this week was worth showing. The Boys Number 1, the 2002 free comic book day edition. Then I picked up some dollar books, so I went to Vibranium Comics, and they're one of the sponsors of the channel. He had uh, these, and so when I say dollar bin, I try to be a little more dramatic. When I pull stuff out of the back issue bin with different prices, and they got a bunch of dollar books, I say I got them out of the dollar bin. So these were out of the dollar bin. These are Spider Woman. Now I didn't have these, so. But they're the, the British Pence edition. And this is number 12. How it says up at the top, Marvel All Color Comics. Now, I want to... to um, a lot of people call these price variants. To me, these are not price variants. Price variants... Okay, so these are the price for the market that they were uh, distributed in. That is the regular price for the British market. If the, they had that distributor or publisher in Britain had put out another issue of this with a different price, that would be a British price variant. This is just a British Pence edition. It's not a variant on the price. And I'm a stickler for that because when I'm looking for price variants and, and typing in on the internet, a lot of times these will come up and people will list them as price variants and they are not. These are just British editions. So I got number 16. Tell me what you think about that. Do you agree with me or you disagree? Do you think these are variants on the price? So this just makes it a British Pence edition. These are like six O's, some of them, I think maybe sevens, but they were a buck. I didn't have it. I'd be I'd like to, you know, finish the run. It, there's not a whole lot of comics in the run. I think it's like 52 comics or something like that. And then and then I got number 19 with guest appearance by Werewolf by Night. Uh, I think a lot of the art in these is Carmen Infantino, uh, Mike Rudewald on the scripts. And this is, again, these are all from 1979, British uh, Pence variants. This was five bucks. I already had it, but it's a really, really nice copy. And it's Brave and the Bold 130. And it has a Joker and a Two-Face appearance. Jim Apparel art, of course. You, you just can't go wrong with that. It's a Bronze Age issue. Um, yeah, so it's five bucks. I think I have this, and it's it's a lot lower grade. This book, this next one is pretty beat up. But, you know, the cover presents well, and it was five dollars. And it's from 1965, and it's a Marvel, and it's Tales to Astonish, number 64. This has a Jack Kirby cover. And then Carl Burgos the creator of the human torch from the golden age he draws the giant man story and then you got steve dicko doing the hulk original steve dicko hulk story that is cool you can't really find those for cheap i mean i think he did the first was it the first four before they canceled the title and then sporadically he did some hulks after that but mostly it was Kirby and then her Trimp later on. So to have a, a Steve Ditko a Hulk story, that's really cool. And I did look at the art. And I'm going to show it right here. This is the reason why I'd rather buy this for $5 than spend money on buying new comics. And this is the reason why if you're looking at the art right now, you just see it's, it's just so cool. 
and you're guaranteed good stories. You never know. It's hit and miss and more miss with the modern comics. And we were just talking about that at the comic shop today. So this is Doctor Strange number two. Uh, I don't know, like a 4.0. It is listed as a key in the key collector app. This is from August 74. I didn't have it. It's a Frank Bruner cover. It was five bucks. <coughs> Stuff like this. Rarely are you going to find for five bucks nowadays. Now, the reason it's a key, unofficially, it's a DC crossover. There's a big two-page centerfold spread in the interiors. And they have uh, an uh, alluding to a figure that is drunk or on the floor, passed out under the table as Green Lantern. He's got the ring on. You can see the ring on his hand. as it's. On. I'm going to show it right here. Did you see the ring on his finger? The tea is spilt. It's yellow tea. Then if you look to the, the other side of the, the next page, you see Nick Fury making reference to the, the servant who's serving the tea. He looks like Green Arrow. He makes a reference about a golden belly bearded nutcase or weirdo. And so I think they were trying to allude to that being Green Arrow. And at the time, Green Arrow and Green Lantern had been popular with the uh, Denny O'Neill and um, Neil Adams run. And it had been, the, the book was on a hiatus. I don't know if it was canceled at the time that this came out. So it's a really cool book. Really a lot of history in this. And I did send an email to Nick at Key Collector because he only referenced the Green Lantern in the story and not the Green Arrow. And I thought, you know, let's let's really get the full description of what's going on here. So hopefully he'll add that in later. Uh, pick this up. I already have it. It's like a 6.5. Could be 7.0. Now, if you go and type in Google and you type in, co type in comic book grade, grading notes, you'll see that the grading scales are pretty forgiving. So a lot of higher grade... 7-0s, 8-9s even, can have multiple defects. A lot of people don't think that. They think that when you get in an, in an 8-5 and a 9-0, the book has to look perfect, but it doesn't. And if you don't believe me, go check it out. So this is really nice. This is not listed as a key, but I've read this. And this has a pretty good um, story that relates to the history of Marvel. So this, her chauffeur... Had been a chauffeur for a few years, unveils himself to be a supervillain. And I'm not going to say who it is because I don't want to spoil it. So that's pretty cool. And the art in here is so good. Her trim is, you know, it's going to be good. And then you got Mike Friedrich on scripts. You know, the story is going to be absolutely fantastic. And I'm showing a few panels from this because I got, I want you guys to see. Why I always say it's better to buy back issues, bronze and silver, than to waste your money buying new comics. And if you're looking at these panels right now, you can tell. But, here comes a modern comic. I know nothing about this. I went through some of the boxes he had set aside for the Comic Fest coming up, and I saw this Howard Chaikin cover. And of course you can tell because he always has women in garter belts, and panties and negligee. This is written by uh, Matt Faction. So Matt Faction has signed a two-year production deal with who I'm not sure, but he has not selected any of the properties yet that he's going to produce or have produced. So this could be one of them. I paid $10 for this new mint copy. I said, what the heck? I like the cover. And Howard Chaikin, I like his American flag. So I hope that this is going to be really good. I haven't read it yet. Oh, that's called Satellite Sam. And it's from 2013. So if you can find this one on the cheap, I can just pick it up. I'm not a specker, but you never know. And you know what? Look at that guy laying on the ground. Look at his hand right there. It looks really cool. Check out her gun. Man, her gun looks fantastic. And he's got some kind of alien head on. What do you think of that? His costume is so awesome. He looks like a Martian or something. A 45 that she's got. And it's, you look at the smoke. The smoke looks so real. Yeah, so great cover, Howard. 
Anyways, oh, by the way, this channel is for adults only, so in case you didn't know that. Sorry, kids, if I corrupted you, but, uh, <laughs> um, okay, so I went to, so these were from Vibranium Comics, he's hosting the Comic Fest, he does a great job, these next ones are from All Star Comics, uh, the next town over, these were from the $3 bin, so we got a nice Superman 218 from July 1969, did read this, kind of surprise story here with the great impy villain if you hint at what I'm trying to say so I was happy to get that for three dollars then I got number 189 nice Kurt Swan cover this is from August 66 and it has Wayne Boring on the art I love Wayne Boring nothing wrong with with um, Kurt Swan but Wayne Boring has a lot more dynamic and action poses to a Superman and it has a real 1950s feel to the character. It's really, I really like his stuff. Then, so that was three bucks. This was three bucks. Superman 188, July 66. I did read all. So this has a really good story about the Superman assassins, the school for, which reminded me of the Crime Academy in Detective Comics in the 80s. Really, really good story. I really liked it. And uh, Batman once I'm uh, Batman Superman 165 from November 63. Again, these were all three bucks. They're not high grade, but they're definitely nice mid grade copies. And that, I, I put around six fives, some of them maybe a seven. Now, I was happy to get this one. I had this in my very first collection when I was just a wee lad of 18. And this is a Wayne Boring cover. Now, I don't know what happened, but. He got to do this cover. Kurt Swan did many covers before this and many covers after. But you can see, look at the dynamic poses of the characters on here. Whereas of Kurt Swan, you wouldn't get this kind of motion and dynamicism, if that's a word. Love this cover. Love this story. It's been 30, 40 years since I've read it. And it has... Okay, so this is before DC. I don't know if they had bought the licensing yet for Shazam or the property. But you can see here, this guy's name has a weird name. It's like Vavam or something like that. It's very similar to something like Shazam. And he actually has all the powers of the Greek gods. Zeus, Mercury, Mars. And his name, uh, Bavam, or it rhymes with Shazam. So a really cool historical copy. This is Action Comics 353. And again, look at that cover. Just the cover is just really cool. And you can tell, here's a Kurt Swan cover. Look at look at the action poses, kind of how he draws compared to this. Even Superman laying on the ground looks very cool. Always pick up Word Western Tales. This is number 24, 1974. Uh Man, who is this? Luis Dominguez cover. He does some great covers. And this is one of the, I think, the best Western comic ever written. Consistently high grade, really great stories. Never cliched, really thought, well thought out. I never understood how the writing never transformed into the superhero genre of the times. That, because these were always so good. I forget who writes this too. If I'm not mistaken, I think it may be Mike Frederick, Friedrich, or however you say it. That was three bucks. And then we got a killer Jim Apparel Phantom Stranger, number 22, December 72 cover. Oh, I did read this. I can't recall the story at the time, but man, just a really nice, cool looking cover. And I wanted to show art in here. Some of these opening panels are just ridiculously stunning. This is why $3 for this and you pay $4 for a brand new comic. This is why I say new comics really suck today. I mean, look at the stunning panels that, that are opening here on Jim Apparel. Just, you, you can't beat it. There's nothing like it today. 
uh, picked this Marvel team up. This is real, kind of a really low grade copy, but I didn't have it. It's three bucks. Um, this has the first appearance of Shang Chi in the in an ad. So technically, by today's standards, it's his first appearance. This is Marvel team up number sixteen from nineteen seventy three. You got Captain Marvel, the Constrictor, Spider-Man. A really, really good story. I did read it. And then anytime I can find these that really look presentable, almost looking high grade, I'll pick them up. So Looney Tunes, 174 from 1956. And actually, I read these. What I love about these Looney Tunes comics, they really capture the essence and personality of the characters. Because I grew up watching Looney Tunes. And that impresses me because that's not easy to do with uh, cartoon funny books to really have each one with individual personalities. This is number 147 from January 1954. So this is a Golden Age comic for three bucks. Really nice looking copy, too. Uh, sorry, guys. Shoulder. So in the next two are eBay purchases. They're Golden Age comics. Uh, I paid, uh, I think like $23 maybe, a little less, shipped on this. And um, it's beautiful. I'll pay $25 or less for these all day. The, the, what I like about these and, and having them in the collection is that these print runs were so low that there's not a whole lot of these out here, out there. So if I can get them and get them in my collection for less than 20 bucks with, with you know, presentable covers and everything attached, why not? And, you know, at this time, was Atlas Comics, they weren't really, they were just trying to make it week to week or month to month. And they were changing titles constantly on these books, changing direction in stories. At the time, uh, Martin Goodman was just Whatever was popular, he jumped on the bandwagon right away. Came to the bullpen, said, no, we got to go with this. This is popular at the time. So they were changing titles in, in series and in numbering and all kinds of stuff. And they have so many different titles between 1953 and 1959, 60, right before. They came out with Fantastic Four and then Amazing Fantasy. And that's when they really revitalized the company, they were almost out of business by 1960, so pretty cool to find that for another one. I think it's my third or fourth one this year that I found for less than 25 bucks. This one was $9, or $10 actually, $9.99 with free shipping. What? Get the heck out of here. Shut the front door. Yep, $10 shipped. And I have another comic that I'm going to grab for $10, Think 13 shipped from, I'm not going to even say where, I don't want you guys to find it. I got it on my, my watch list, I'm about to pull the trigger on it, probably tomorrow. But it's a funny animal book, that's all I'm going to say. But this is Wanted Comics, number 34, this is by Toy Town Publishers. Uh, this is um, from 1950. This has a Mort Leave cover, and he does the first and the third story, and then you got a Bill Everett story in here, and a, he and Bill Everett does the second story, and actually the fourth part continuation, and then you got John Buscema who does the Dawn Patrol gang fifth story in here. So you got a lot of great artists on this book, and I pressed it, I cleaned it, it needed a lot of help, and it looked fantastic. Very ominous looking cover and character. I have not read that one yet. So, last two. Picked this up for five bucks. I, I think I, I may have paid ten for it. I don't know. But it's a key. Yeah, I paid ten for this. He had twenty. I asked him if he'd take ten. He took ten. A Marvel feature number four. This is the first time that Hank Pym becomes Ant-Man again. After becoming Giant-Man, Goliath... And whoever, he, I think he was another hero too. So this is Mike Friedrich on the script, Herb Trimp on the art. You know it's going to be good. 
great Bronze Age looking cover. Um, I'm going to show a couple panels right now from this, another reason why. Spend your money on these back issue bronze titles from Marvel and even some DC. You always will do better in buying new comics, in my opinion. And books like this, even if it's a it's a low key, it, it will probably hold its value. Where those new comics, they come up, they shoot up, they shoot down, and they're all over a place like a ricochet bullet. Last comic, this was five bucks. Uh, Tales of Unexpected, number 22, Jack Kirby cover. Now, he doesn't do anything on the interiors. This is from February 1958. If I can get any comic from the 50s from DC or Atlas for five bucks, you better bet your petunias that Night Tiger is going to slap down that $5 bill. So, it does have a, a water stain, but you, you almost can't see it. In the volcano but guys that's all that I got I'm telling you if you're in the area if you live in Florida make the trip down here August 22nd I guarantee you you will not be disappointed and you get 10% off just mentioning that I told you to to go to the vibranium or the Captain Kirk uh, geek booth heck spend 100 bucks save 10 spend 50 save 5 spend a dollar save a dime you're saving money. And not only that, I, you're going to find stuff. You, I'm telling you, this is better than any Comic-Con that goes on within a 100 or maybe even 200 mile radius. You don't even have to pay. There's no entry fee whatsoever to get in. You could get some comics, get in there early, go get lunch with the wife or the girlfriend, the kids, and then head back home and be home by 6 o'clock. And bring you some great deals. So anyways, before I go, let me tell you what stupid thing that I did. I took the blade off my lawnmower and I was dri driving up to the hardware store and I had it in my left hand because I can't drive with this hand. And I turned the wheel and yeah, I sliced my finger that, <laughs> that long. <laughs> oh yeah, it's one of, the, one, of the, one of the stupidest things I ever did. So I just added to the annuals of... Of the stupid things that I've done. So be careful holding your uh, lawnmower mower blade in your hand while you're driving. But anyway, this is Ti Night Tiger saying peace out. Get out there and just haunt. Things are opening up. You, you know, wear your mask if you got to, but get out there. Don't be afraid. Don't get into this psychology of fear that people are trying to uh, cultivate out there. Shop. Go out to eat. Go to your comic shops. Support the, the local businesses. I've been hunting around for the last two or three weeks. No big deal. And, uh, yeah. So, that's it. That's all I got. I'm glad that you stuck around this long. If you did, you're damn well you are a nerd or a geek. So, thanks, guys. Thank you, everybody, for support. I'm about to hit 1,000 subscribers. And I'm going to have to do something to show my appreciation for all of you. All right. Peace out.